Hi, in this video we are going to talk about the hormones of the adrenal gland. Now adrenal gland is situated at the top of the kidney. If we take a cross section of the adrenal gland, we would understand there are two distinct anatomical regions. The inner side is the adrenal medulla and the outer side is the adrenal cortex. Let's take a look at the adrenal cortex and medulla in a bit more details. Adrenal cortex is shown here in pale yellow, whereas in the, med the medulla is shown here in the dark brown shade. Now all of these adrenal cortex and medulla, the whole adrenal gland receives the blood supply from superior, middle and inferior adrenal arteries, whereas the ven venous drainage system is based on left and right adrenal veins. The adrenal medulla also receive neuronal input. If we take a cross section of the adrenal gland from the capsule region, which is the outer side, which is the outer covering, we would see from the top to bottom, the layers are zona granulosa, which is the peripheral most layer in the adrenal cortex, zona fasciculata, and zona reticularis. And then we would have adrenal medulla. All of these anatomically distinct location have different morphologies of the cells. For example, zona granulosa has granular and dispersed cells which having a more or less circular morphology whereas the zona fasciculata, the cells are forming a fascicle-like structure and zona granulosa secretes mineralocorticoids which regulates the mineral balance, specifically the sodium-potassium balance in the blood. Key hormone which is secreted from zona granulosa is aldosterone. Zona fasciculata give rise to glucocorticoids, which regulates glucose metabolism. Key hormones which are secreted from zona fasciculata are cortisol, cortisone, or corticosterone. Zona reticularis give rise to androgens, which stimulate masculine properties in males and many other uh, secondary sexual cat properties, for example, libido in case of females. Now, dehydroepiandosterone and andosteridione are the two hormones which are secreted from zona reticularis. Now, let's look at the adrenal medulla. From the adrenal medulla, the two key hormones which are secreted are stress hormones and they help in flight or fight responses. They are epinephrine and norepinephrine. So all the hormones which are secreted from the adrenal cortex are overall steroids. For example, aldosterone, cortisol, and dehydroepiandosterone. All of these things ha are having an overall cholesterol-based structure. So all of them are derivative of cholesterol and they are steroids. Now, let's look at what is the overall mechanism by which these hormones which are secreted from the adrenal cortex work. So steroid hormones generally have intracellular receptors and their receptors are majorly present in the cytosol and they, these receptors when don't bind to the ligand they are in an inactivated situation by the presence of heat shock proteins. The heat shock proteins destabilize their conformation but when the ligand binds these heat shock proteins disassemble from these receptors. As a result, the receptor bound ligand complex can mobilize to the nucleus. And while they mobilize to the nucleus, they can start gene expression and many other transcriptional changes. Now, in the gene, there are specific elements known as hormone response elements. For example, the mineralocorticoids, there would be aldosterone response element or mineralocorticoid response element. And these response elements have unique sequence features which are recognized by the DNA binding domain of the nuclear receptors. For example, if it's a mineralocorticoid receptor, it would detect only mineralocorticoid response element. It won't detect a glucocorticoid response element. And this is done by the zinc finger motifs present in the DNA binding domain of the receptors and thereby the transcriptional activity takes place. So let's just look at the function of all these uh, adrenal cortex hormones in details, in a bit more details. So 
the kidney has their functional unit which is known as the nephrons and in the nephrons we would see there are proximal and distal convoluted tubule and in the distal convoluted tubule several ions and water are reabsorbed the mineral corticoid aldosterone helps in the reabsorption of water and sodium especially from the distal convoluted tubule right now whenever there is a reduction in the blood pressure in the nephrons or glomerular uh, filtration unit in that situation the kidney would try to increase the blood pressure by absorbing more sodium and water and that is positively regulated by aldosterone aldosterone also allow secretion of potassium in the urine so whenever the glomerular blood pressure is down aldosterone kicks in and positively regulate the reabsorption process of sodium and water from the distal convoluted tubule and the detailed mechanism would be covered in a different video but overall they allow the expression of the sodium and the water transporters on the surface of these distal convoluted tubule and thereby helping in the reabsorption process other than that the cortisols which are the glucocorticoids they have diverse function for example cortisol help in glucose metabolism by stimulating gluconeogenesis pathway enzymes it ensures that gluconeogenesis is greatly enhanced it also have hyperglycemic uh, effect that means it increase the glucose level and it also decrease the glucose utilization in the cells as a result blood glucose level may increase now in terms of protein cortisol decrease protein anabolism while decrease while increasing the protein catabolism sometime when cortisol level is very high the muscular muscle proteins are heavily catabolized and sometime it is very difficult to even move in from a squatting position because our muscles are getting weak so cortisol have a negative regulation in terms of protein anabolism while it increase the rate of protein catabolism in terms of fat mobilization cortisol is also important because it mobilize all the free fatty acid from the adipose tissue store and allow the utilization of the fatty acid as a fuel and that is why fat mobilization is an important function of cortisol so cortisol cortisol has a widespread role in metabolism in various aspects of the metabolism not only that cortisol works like a immune suppressant so it suppresses the immune system and thereby it can decrease inflammation and people having severe inflammation could get benefit out of cortisol but it at the same time it also increases the risk of infections now cortisol has effects on bones inside the bones there are two type of cells like osteoclast and osteoplast osteoclast are the cells which sort of eat up the bone and cortisol turned out to positively regulate osteoclast activity and thereby increasing the risk of bone disease and osteoporosis now the third type of hormone which is secreted from the adrenal cortex is the androgens androgens are widely secreted during uh, the embryonic period and the key hormone which is secreted are known is the dehydroepiandosterone now the key function of these dehydroepiandosterone is in the development of prostate glands in case of the males and also uh, it helps in maintaining the secondary sexual character such as facial hair and pitch voice voice etc in case of female it regulates the libido because decrease in uh, the sex steroids from adrenal gland may decrease in libido and a reduced sexual drive now let's come to the adrenal medulla hormones adrenal medulla hormones are key category of stress hormones that means it helps our body in times of fight or flight response now epinephrine and the norepinephrine are the key hormones which are secreted from the adrenal medulla chemically both these hormones are known as catecholamines so these are derivative of phenylalanine 
and both of them, them are a modification of phenylalanine. Now these hormones are actually secreted by these nerve terminals in the uh, adrenal medulla. Now this adrenal medulla is very important in terms of stress response. For example, in case of strenuous exercise, when we need to move or when we need to run, let's say for an athlete, when he, when he need to run, his muscles need to flex and contract for very short duration. I mean, vigorously in a very short duration. So he needs a lot and lot of glucose. But after at a point of time, the muscle glucose would be depleted. So how the muscle would replenish the glucose and produce energy and give the muscle to give the muscle enough amount of ATP to contract. And that ha happens with the help of epinephrine. So muscle has beta adrenergic receptors and adrenaline or epinephrine binds to these adrenergic receptors and evoke a G protein coupled receptor pathway. As a result, cyclic AMP level rise and protein kinase A activates several enzymes in the glycogenolysis pathway. So the muscle glycogen, which is a reserve for glucose, would be broken down and it would give a steady supply of glucose to the muscle. And that is how our fight and flight response could be orchestrated at the molecular level. Now, let's talk about the feedback regulation of these hormones present in adrenal gland. So the hypothalamus release corticotropin releasing hormones. And these releasing hormones are acting on the anterior pituitary release hormone such as ACTH, adrenal corticotropic hormone. Adrenal corticotropic hormone stimulates the adrenal gland and as a result adrenal gland secretes mineral corticoids, glucocorticoids, androgens, etc. Especially when the level of these uh, adrenal cortical hormones increase or adrenal cortical steroids increase, especially the glucocorticoid, it gives a negative feedback to the hypothalamus. Now then hypothalamus reduce the secretion of CRH, as a result, ACTH level also drops and adrenal gland stops secreting a lot of steroid hormones from the adrenal cortex. And this is how the feedback cycle works and that is how the steady state level of adrenal steroids are maintained in our body. So I hope this video was helpful. In other videos, I would be talking, de I, mean, I would be talking about glucocorticoids and mineral corticoids and their function and their molecular aspects in detail. So stay tuned and show some love by giving some comments. Your comments give me so much positive motivation such that I can make more videos. Thank you.